Well, good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Jacqueline King here, and I am back with another episode of Spotlight. And Spotlight is where we interview amazing people doing amazing things. And of course, today will not disappoint you. We have the lovely, I call her queen of hair and hair products, uh, Miss Eunice Mosley Dudley. How are you doing, Mrs. Dudley? I'm doing great. Absolutely great today. Well, we are honored to bring you to our, I, I posted the flyer and everybody was cheering and it's everywhere and cheering it because you know, you are the queen of hair, um, you know, for so many years, so many years. I'm just going to give them a, a little overview of what you've done because you've done so much. Um, Co-founder of the Dudley Q Plus brand is one of the world's most sought after African-American female business leaders. She currently serves as the executive director for the Dudley Beauty School System. Eunice Mosley was born in Selma, Alabama. She is the seventh of nine children born to Andrew M. Mosley Sr. and Eva O. Murdoch Mosley. At very early age, she exhibited a creative spirit and a deep desire to learn. And you began selling as a teenager. Talk about that. Well, believe it or not, I started selling door to door in Brooklyn, New York when I was 17 years old, right after I finished high school. That was an amazing experience and an awakening. Well, let me tell you, that's that's scary because to me, sales is scary anyway. So you had the boldness. You didn't have any fear of rejection. Something. What what made you just want to get out there and do that? Well, it was during the time of a mild recession, and I had gone to New York to live with an aunt who had just recently gotten married. And she wanted to help me by not charging me any rent or any money for room and board while I worked that summer. And she was doing that to more or less pay my mother back while helping her when she was a college student at Grambling University in Louisiana. So I looked for work in offices and couldn't get any. So she had done some door-to-door -door selling as well as her husband with the Fuller Company in New York City. So I ended up meeting the branch manager, invited him into a meeting and I didn't go. So he came by our house and invited me again and told me all about the young college students that were there and how they were making money and saving it to go back to college. So that made me very interested. So I went to the meeting the next day and I saw what they were doing. I saw the money they were making. I saw what they were saving. And I said, well, I didn't come here to do that, but I will. And that's wow. what I did. That, what an inspiration that is. So tell me how it went for you. You started selling. Did you just shoot right to the top or what happened no, after that? I have never been a real top salesperson. So for the very beginners, back in 1960, um, 10 years ago, to be exact, 60 years ago, it was the goal for a brand new person to sell $20 worth of cosmetics and beauty products per day, at least. And then our seasoned sales representative to sell more than $40 a day. So that was my goal, to learn to sell $20 a day. And then after that, I, I had gone out with uh, one of the seasoned sales representatives. And after we knocked on a few doors and he showed me what to do, then I told him, well, I'll go on the other side of the street and I'll see if I can sell on my own. I said, uh, you showed me what to do and I will do it. And that's I what it. I did. So when I went back the next morning with my sales figures, I probably, I don't even remember how much money I had. But I do know I had to build up to the $20. I didn't start out selling $20 the very first day, but I did build up to that. And I was able to see other sales representatives who were there who were making the $20 per day or selling the $20 or selling the $40. And so that's when I had a chance to meet Mr. Dudley. And so at that time, uh, he was working to go back to, to a and well, I was working and saved my money to go to Talladega College in Talladega, Alabama. 
So that's how I got started. And the sales meetings were to teach you how to sell, how to have courage, how to have initiative and have a backbone. Those were the things the sales meetings did for us every day. We would sing pep songs. We would have sales representatives fighting with teens. We had a couple of teens. The team leader would always give a sales talk in the morning. Then after that, our sales manager would give a sales talk. So you've got the opportunity to get pepped up and explain to how to sell, how to sell the products, what they were made out of, uh, what they're to do, how they react on the hair, skin, and face, whatever you were selling, they were able to explain to us the products and what they did. And so we had plenty of opportunities to learn to gain backbones instead of gristle. And we had to learn how to leave our feelings at home. Wow. And see, once we learned all of that, we were ready to go. But we had sales meetings to reinforce it every day. And that was six days a week. So that was your foundation. So is that, that's what gave you the drive to start. Okay, let's, let's back up. So you, how did you and Mr. Dudley come together and come up with the, your concept? Well, every day we started dating right away. And it was my responsibility to get the $20. His responsibility to get the $40 a day or we couldn't date that night. He couldn't come over to my, my aunt's uh, apartment <laughs> if it. he didn't get the $40. If I didn't get the 20, we couldn't see each other. So that was a driving force for us to spend time together after work if we got our quotas. And so oh, with, his, and with his, and my, my cousin's husband was in the real estate business. He had just started selling summer vacation homes in Atlantic City. Atlantic City was just getting ready to get started and they were selling uh, lots with homes on them for the summer vacation. So we decided to get together and buy a piece of property. And that was in that seven and a half weeks so that we were in New York. Wow. So we weren't True. trained. Wow. And then the following December, he came to visit me in Alabama and we got engaged. And that following June, right after that first year of my college time, we got married. And, and so you, you were already, you were a power couple when, when it wasn't even popular. Exactly. So, okay, all right. We meant so business. You got, yes, I love it. So how, okay. Tell me how you started the business and wh what happened after that. Well, right after that first year, uh, uh, after we got married, I went back to Talladega College. We uh, worked again in New York City at, for the summer, saved our money, and then I went back to Talladega. He went back to North Carolina a and in Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, after I was there for a little more than a month, I got really, really ill. And I needed to go to the doctor every day. So they just had an infirmary on the campus. It wasn't a hospital or, you know, big time uh, clinic of any kind. So I knew I needed to go to Greensboro where Joe was so I would be able to see the doctor every day to get well. So after I got well, I was there for a couple of months. And so I got well. We decided that I ought to go to North Carolina a &T. Aggie sure. Pride. That's, we, that's right, exactly. <laughs> so because of that, we didn't have enough money to pay up front for both of us for the second quarter, because that's when I was being able to go to school. But we went to see the president. We didn't go to the registrar. We went to the president. And we told him that we wanted to see if we could work out a monthly payment for the two of us to be able to go to school because we knew we could sell enough products and use the profit for us to be able to both attend at the same time. And then he said, well, what kind of work are you doing? And we told him, we're selling Fuller products. He said, I know all about Fuller products because I have a brother that used to sell Fuller products. So I understand how you can make money 
and he agreed. So wow. we were able to go to school and Joe was able to finish A&T that particular year. After that, we went back to Brooklyn, New York, and we lived there for five years. During that time, Joe did a lot of recruiting and I worked in the office and I sold some part-time. So I learned the ins and outs of how to run the office by working on a daily basis. And then he did the recruiting and was able to recruit quite a few people. So during that time, Mr. Fuller would tap couples to up, open up new areas or to take over spaces where people were retiring. So there came about, about three different opportunities and Joe and Eunice were not chosen. It was always somebody else from another branch in Brooklyn, in uh, New York City. So then Joe started getting discouraged. He said, this is not gonna work. I'm not gonna keep on doing this. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna raise me some hogs. Because at that time you didn't have very many lean hogs. Mostly people had, most people had fat, fat hogs. They had a lot of lard and a lot of grease. And he said, I want to get some lean, I want some lean bacon. And so he started researching through the agricultural extension agents, what could be done to raise healthy lean hogs. And so he ended up coming to Greensboro and had a chance to talk with the agricultural extension agent there, told him what he wanted. They laid out a program of what he could do if he moved back to Aurora, North Carolina, onto the farm that his mom and dad was working and lived on. And he could have this wonderful farm life that he wanted and we would live in a trailer. Mm. I thought I would die. <laughs> I said, live in a trailer. Here it is, we have this brand new apartment in, in um, Brooklyn living on the seventh floor, two bedroom apartment, and you want me to leave and go live <laughs> in a trailer? He said, well, it is really getting to me. Mentally, it's killing me to stay here. I need to leave. So more or less like what's going on with Simone Biles, along with what just went on, with the young lady in in the tennis, mm -hmm. Osaka, that just dropped out for a while because she was dealing with pressures, right, and, and uh, wanted to take some time off, and that was the same thing with Simone at the Olympics. He was going through the same kind of situation. He just couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. He was sick. The doctor said, "There's nothing wrong with you." There's nothing physically <laughs> wrong with you. <laughs> so anyway, he said, well, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So he went to North Carolina, worked at all these big ideas. And so finally, I was convinced because he had one brother that was a vet and another brother studying to be a vet. And we knew that they took care of animals. A lot of animals that are living in the special places have houses that they live in houses that where they're fed. Then if they need to go back and graze somewhere outside, they can do that. They can be given vitamins and shots and things to help them to be healthy. So I understood all of that. So I knew we were not going just, just to be raggedy farmers. We were going back for a special program that he wanted to do. So I was willing to do it. I relented. Well, after he got ready to get started with the program, Mr. Fuller, of the main office in Chicago uh -oh. heard about it and said, oh, no, you're not going to raise hogs. You're going to continue to raise people. So he directed him to come to Chicago for six weeks. He said, I can't convince you to raise people during this six weeks time. Then you can go on to North Carolina to Aurora and raise those hogs. So after the six weeks was over, Joe came back and said, OK, I'm not going to the farm. We're going <laughs> to open our own distributorship in Fuller Products. We'll have the very first one. It'll be our own, 
and we will own whatever we're doing with our sales business. It will be ours. It will not be controlled by the home office in Chicago. It'll be our own. So that's how we got started. That is, you know what? You said so much, but let me tell you. So you have exhibited the art of negotiations because that, that was all negotiated. Uh, the art of commitment and stick to it. Development. I mean, it goes on and on. All this is rolled up into your story. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because like today's young people, they want instant and they don't want to plan and they don't want to study and they don't want to prepare. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They just want it. Just wanted to just like just uh, just just appear, but what you just told it took uh, first of all it took courage, boldness, all of that, and so man, I'm like I'm so inspired. I don't know. I'm ready to do something myself. I don't know what I'm ready to do, but it's very very inspiring. So you started your own uh, Fuller um, a branch off company, and so how, I, I need to know how you got to Dudley's. Well, during the time that we got started, Fuller Products was going through bankruptcy reorganization oh. and did not have many products for us to sell. Well, mind you, we had gotten started. We were learning to recruit people, people were selling, and then all of a sudden we had nothing to sell. So wow. we ended up still getting all we could from Fuller and we bought out a small company of a gentleman that was working beauty salons and barbershops that lived in Richmond, Virginia. And he would come all the way down to Greensboro selling products. Eat, well, every other week, he would come down to sell products. And he also was doing recycling. But during that time, there were no plastic bottles or jars. Everything was being sold basically in glass. So, all of the little relaxers and pressing oils and creams and things were in glass containers. That meant those items could be cleaned out, sterilized and disinfected. So we, and then all of the caps were metal. And so they could be right. uh, clean, disinfected and sanitized as well. So we bought containers for what we wanted to make, which was pressing oil, curling wax, uh, oil shampoo, and people uh, years ago, mm -hmm. and young people never heard of this, did not shampoo their hair when they were on this cycle. When right, I remember that. that. Yes, yeah. women didn't, didn't, didn't shampoo their hair. But so they used what was called an oil shampoo. And it was a liquid and it was applied with cotton. And the okay. stylists would use it or they could use it at home. So we were making oil shampoo and we were selling, we had about seven items that we bought from the gentleman. And uh, one of those items is still one of our best sellers today. It's called Scalp Special. It's mm -hmm. uh, a product that you're able to use to help with thinning temples and dandruff and dryness. And because it has cinnamon menthol in it as well. So anyway, we decided, well, hey, we get what we can from Fuller, the bubble baths and the, the um, preparations, shampoos and conditioners that they have. Well, we're going to start making some things that we had, the curling wax, the pressing oils, the pressing creams, those things and the shampoos and dealing with the, um, the soap that was in big cakes for shampoo soaps. So it was very interesting. So when we got ready to start using the recycled items, then the best way to do a label was for me to type it because oh, I was boy. fluent in typing. And because I had um, learned to type in high school, I was able to skip a semester of typing when I came to a and because I was good. Then I was able to get a job for a year and a half being a typist at a law firm that was in the same building where we had our daughter to a sales office. So for a year and a half, I worked at that law firm and then I was able to type the labels and we were able to put them on the products and then my children would put the caps on. Joe would make the products in the kitchen and the kids 
would put the labels on them and we would sell just about everything every day. Everything we basically made, the sales people sold it that day. Talking that about fresh products. Amazing. Right out of the kitchen, right into the sales office, into their sales bag, into the customer's home. You couldn't get any fresher than that. Wow, out the kitchen. I love it. Okay, fast forward. How did you end up getting your first building? What happened after that? Well, let's see. It's been so long. We, we rented <laughs> a lot of buildings. We rented a lot. And, um, mm, hmm, whoa. At one time, we had about 20 different places. And that those, you were those renting? Were, yes, we were renting. They had beauty supply places all up and down the East Coast. We were uh, doing a lot of rec jobbing uh, with sales representatives that were going into the Eckers drugstore. Uh, filling their shelves with the Johnson products, the Ultra Sheen, uh, the oil, the, the oil Sheen spray they used to have, um, just products. So we kind of we kind of gradually started making our own, and we started selling other folks' products. And then after we got to a point that we realized that the other manufacturers were not going to keep their products professional. Then we decided to go into making our own products and selling them the chemicals, but kept that professional. But you were asking me about our first building. And I'm trying to think we had so many rentals. Um, yeah, so what I'm trying to figure out is how you went from the kitchen to your first building. Do you remember that? We, we, yeah, we rented the space. It so you a, just rented uh, one space or you just went out and rented all of them at the same time? No, we rented one at a time. And then okay. as our salespeople grew and we kind of trained them for what we wanted, then we put them in a different place. We went to Greenville, North Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. Um, and, and one time we had, we bought out um, uh, nine beauty schools. So we were just all over the place. We were in Durham, North Carolina, um, Charlotte, just Every place you can think of, we were in those different look Atlanta. We were all around different different cities, and and uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Sumter, South Carolina, uh, Greenville. Um, you name it. We we were in lots and lots of places. But Winston Salem was our first place we did the most in another city. We had mm -hmm. a beauty salon there and door to door sales. And so in the back of that building is where we started doing some manufacturing in a larger scale. So you remind me of, what's the late, the first millionaire, Madam, what was her name? Madam C.J. Walker. Right, so it's it's very similar story, isn't it? It is, but you know what? There was somebody that was, that was Madam Malone that was even before Madam C.J. Walker, but most people don't even know about Madam Malone. Really? And Poro. They don't know about them and they don't talk very much about them. But actually, Madam C.J. Walker came out of Ms. Malone with the poor. Really? Yes, she did. So, so do you go ahead. Do you all still have sales reps or you don't do that anymore? Oh, yeah, we still have. Mr. Dudley's trying his best to get another sales group together to sell a product that he's making. It's called a topical pain relief. And he has another one that's called a, a nutmeg oil. So yeah, so he's, as of right this minute, he is recruiting people to sell those two products along with some other items that he has. But yes, he makes a topical pain relief and a nutmeg oil. Yes. We so I need, to, I need to interview door -door. him. He, I need to interview him so he can he reach our audience, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so your beauty salons. And I actually, you know, I'm, you know, I'm from Greensboro. Do you know Ben Parker from uh, Ben Parker's Auto Outlet? What's the name? Used to sell, ben Parker used to sell cars. He still does a commercial now with Pete, uh, Pete's Auto Mall, Ben Parker's Auto Outlet in Greensboro. Is it is he pinned to the Parkers that have the funeral home? No, he, he's not. But he used to have a he used to have a dealership on East Market Street, Ben Parker's Auto Outlet. A lot of people know him. Anyway, okay. that's my dad. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so sales. How far down? Yeah. How far down on East Market? Girl, I'm, I didn't live in Greensboro, but I mean, I didn't live in Greensboro when he had the shop, so I can't tell you. But it's still a shop there. It's still a. It's still a. He sold it, but it's still the uh, auto 
whatever it is now. But just about everybody in Greensboro knows that. And then he's got he's got the commercial that comes on now that uh, he he does for Pete's Auto Mall. Wow. Um, yeah, but yeah, he so he had his shop for forty years wow. in Greensboro. He might have even come in contact with Charles Bell. Charles Bell used to be on that end of town as well with the auto place. Did. And I think he know. I think he knows your husband. I think I think we were down at occasions one time and ran into him. But and he and they know each other. But yeah, so sales is in my family, but it's not in me because I don't. I can't do sales. <laughs> I'm not that bold. <laughs> That's all right. It depends on what you have to do. Right. Oh, I know. I know. There's plenty of money in it. But anyway, I love your story. Okay, so let's talk about the beauty salons. Like I said, when I was in Greensboro. I used to go to the beauty salon. So let's talk about how the beauty salons uh, came about and how they're doing. I think the main thing that we wanted to do was get people educated. So we bought a beauty school first back in 1971. And that okay. was downtown Greensboro on South Elm Street. And so when we went to Chicago, oh, probably about 1976 or 1977, we wanted to sell the beauty school to the young lady that was running it. So she didn't want to buy it. Then we said, okay, we'll give it to you. Oh, she wow. Said, no, I, I don't want the responsibility. So we ended up closing that school. So we just continued to open salons, but we had a salon on Elm Street. We had a salon on Market Street. We had one on Phillips Avenue. Another one on Florida Street. Mind you, four salons in Greensboro at one wow. time. That's awesome. And we had them in other cities as well. And the biggest one we had at the time was in Charlotte. We had one in Charlotte. And so our door-to-door -door sales business in Charlotte grew so fast that we had to move them out of their location into a much larger one for them to keep up with what they were doing. And we opened a salon in that space as well. Wow, this is this is a lot. So I know you still have the one on Green in Greensboro that I used to go to, right? The big one, right? Well, it depends. Um, <laughs> we on, had a, at one market. Point, uh -huh. think, where was it? It was it was off of Market Street. Well, there there's we there's a Dudley salon on East Market Street right now. Okay. And then we have the beauty school that's downtown on South Elm. And for many years, that location used to be a beauty salon. Okay. In the okay. 80s. In the 70s and 80s, it was a salon. Then in the 90s, in the mid-90s, mid we turned into a beauty school. Then after that, in the 2000s or so, we turned it back into another salon. And then in 2013, I'll open it up as a beauty school again. There, there is, you know, with the pandemic, there's so much money to be made in hair. It really is, because we're going to get our hair done. You already know this. Uh, so for the beauty schools, how how is it doing? Is Has it picked up during the pandemic? I know a lot of people, I know people kind of fell off because the things closed down. But like I, I know there's a lot of money being made because I mean when I was going I, even with my natural hair natural hair people think it's uh, a cheap but it's actually expensive to keep up natural hair you know just like it is chemical yes it, it is it depends on on the location my brother-in-law and niece have a beauty school in Washington DC and their business is picking back up uh, my business is in Greensboro and it's coming along better but our beauty school in Chicago is growing by leaps and bounds. They are having to put people on a waiting list for some of the courses that they're teaching in the space. They burst out their scenes at their location. And um, they're just really, really growing. They had 100 people that participated in their graduation uh, wow. last month in, the, in July. So they're really, really growing. So we're very thankful for what's happening in all of our businesses. It's just the three schools left now. And you asked about our first building that we bought. And that's the building that I'm in at the beauty school downtown Greensboro. We bought that building in, in 1971 or 72 is when we purchased that building. And at the time we moved a building, moved a business that we had purchased that was 
cater into the Caucasian market. And all the salespeople we had were older individuals who were selling products to Caucasian barbershops, beauty shops and barbershops. So a lot of times my mind doesn't go there because we kept them on until all of them either died or retired. Oh, wow. And then after that, we changed the name of that business from Piedmont Beauty and Barber Supply to Dudley. But long as they were living and operating, we kept it as Piedmont Beauty and Barber Supply. That's, that's why you're blessed. I mean, you are blessed. You're, you're abundantly blessed because you know what? Um, it's, it's just an, an integrity thing, I think. Uh, if if you do right by people, God does right by you. You know, BWE is a is a Christian organization, and I've always I've lived by that, and it's really kept me. Do you ever get back to Chicago? Because I'm in Indiana. Look, we can meet. We could have lunch. <laughs> and yeah, I'm actually, I, bro. Hmm? I, I didn't go at all for two years, and so I have a cousin that lost her husband, and so for the the latter part, the, the, I believe the last week in. June, I went to the funeral services for my cousin's husband. So I went mm -hmm. up for that. I came on back. And then two weeks later, we had our graduation. I went back to that. Normally, I get there every other year unless we're having some type of training at that location that I need to attend or graduation. But that's yeah, all right. I, I got a Chicago. daughter. I got a daughter and a daddy and a grandchild and a son-in-law in Greensboro. So when I when I come to Greensboro, then we could go. We can have lunch and dinner. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, this is this is this is so encouraging. I have to tell you, this is one of the best interviews I can say that I've ever done because right now people need hope uh, more than ever. They need hope. And, and to know that somebody out there is still making things happen. has And your hair is beautiful, by the way. And it's been making things happen for years. This is not, this is not a fly-by-night. Dudley is a household name, always was. So you are going to be, uh, to our audience, such an encouragement and inspiration where the women know that if she did it, I can do it. Um, so... If they want to join your, I don't know, sales, I don't know, how does that work? If they want to join the sales or if they want to go to the school, give some information on how they can get involved with Dudley. Well, now for, the, for our corporate website, which is the company my daughter owns, Ursula, it is Dudley Beauty Corp. They have a website and it's www.dudleyq.com. And on there, it has a space that says opportunities. So once they go there and press the opportunities, they're able to sign up or see if they're interested in our beauty advisor program or in the salon business where we have sales representatives that go to beauty salons and barbershops all over the country, as well as some international business as well. Now, if they're interested in selling the topic of pain relief products, they can contact me and I can get them in contact with Mr. Dudley. Who and I'll be Ella. interviewing. Ella's the young lady that helps him run that division of the products. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out and interview him. I want him to tell his story too. But um, so that, so you, you had, you got married. Well, I'm going back. You got married. You had two beautiful kids. One's an attorney and, and I don't know her, but I do know Joe very well, Joe Jr. Very well. Talk about your kids. You've done well. Well, I actually have three children. Oh, I didn't see. I missed one. I you didn't miss know. one. Most people <laughs> miss that one because she was born seven years later after Ursula. Okay. And I had told Mr. Dudley, he's like, he wanted two more children. I said, oh, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> we aren't going to have any more children till we make some money. See, we had Ursula and Joe Jr. when we were poor. <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> you don't make any money? No more babies. <laughs> so we waited seven years between Ursula and the youngest daughter, whose name is Jania. Okay. Now, she has a business, and she's... She likes being out of the limelight. She doesn't want limelight. She doesn't want fanfare. She wants none of that. She just wants to run her businesses, and she does. So she's in oh. the spa business, and then she does manufacturing, and then she has candles of all kinds, inexpensive, wow. high-end, whatever you want in terms of candles, 
she does that. And I do the beauty school and our, our website is DudleyCosmetology.com. And so, or DCU.com, either one of those, they'll be able to get to our website or to be able to send me an email through either one of those. And so, and if not, they can just pick up the phone and, and, and or go on the on internet and just look up Dudley anything. And people call me all the time, all, all the time for someone else in the business. And so uh, last week, somebody called me and asked about something or somebody. And they said, they don't have nothing to do with Dudley. I said, they just know <laughs> we give out information. And years ago, when they had the Ebony fashion shows and different concerts and things in town, he would just call Miss Dudley, when is the Ebony fashion show? Now, I'm not in the sororities. I, I didn't have <laughs> nothing to do with the Ebony fashion show. But people call us for information. When and it comes to black women. That's I don't mind. what they do. You are That's the right. staple. And I'll staple. go to the website and find it for them if I need to. Oh. Whatever they're calling for, I'm going to help them. If they wouldn't have called me if they didn't want me to help them. Oh, so I do. Are, That's my job. So, you're such a blessing. Here, I want to know about the hair, the edging thing, because go ahead and try to get that, because I want that myself. For the edges, your, your best-selling product, talk about that and tell how to get it because I'm going to order me some as soon as we get off the air. Yes, uh, please do. your hair is so strong and pretty. <laughs> well, thank you. I believe in using our products and I also believe in using hair color. I'm, and see, I just graduated from beauty school last year. I saw, so, you know what? I looked you up and I saw that. I saw the YouTube video. Girl, I, look, I already know. I saw it. It was great. <laughs> So people look at me and they say, you know, that old woman's wearing all that hair color. Yes, I was a beauty school student and that's what they do. Now I'm not wearing blue and green and yellow and all of those, <laughs> but uh, that's what beauty school students do. They wear all the crazy colors. And so I've gotten lighter and lighter and lighter. And even my children come around and say, oh, mama, you're getting oh, wait, look, yes, you I you working it. No, you, it's hot. It really it's getting is. sassy uh -huh. and it's all right. So yes, so, and that'll do that to you, going to beauty school. So I want to know about the Edge uh, Saver. That's what I want to know. Where is it? What's the name? How you get it? And what, Edge Janine's? Yeah, the ones you said is your best-selling product to keep your Oh, edges. we have several best-selling products. But yes, uh, I was talking about that that um, uh, scalp special. Scalp special, yes. vitamin A, D, and E with hairdressing. Um, then we have uh, PCA. That's a product that anybody can use in the hair. It's a moisture retainer. Anybody can use it. Men, women, and children can use that. We just, we've got a number of products that are really- and where do they go? Where can they, can they order them online? They can order them online, yes. And where, what's or, that And some beauty salons in different places have it as well. We have Honey, what I'm in called. Indiana. I'm in Indiana. We ain't got a whole bunch of black beauty salons here, but they what might, the Chinese might have what part, of, what part of Indiana are you in? I'm in Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne. Okay. Now, what uh, we have on the DudleyQ.com website is something called the Salon Locator. It'll okay. ask you for your zip code, and then it'll ask, it'll, and then it will tell you if anybody's within 50 miles of you. Okay. And if it's not, then you can order from the website. Oh, no, I, I'd rather just go to the website and get it. I ain't okay. trying to look all that stuff. That's a, Now, what's the website that they should go to to order the products? Well, it's www.dudleyq.com. Okay. And they even got to leave even fancier with, uh, I believe it's a shopdudley.com. Uh, okay. The newer one that they've got out because they use it for a convention that I had a booth for, for my business professional women's convention last week. So it might be just shopdudley.com. Well, we'll make sure that we get all of the um, correct websites and we'll go ahead and post it uh, on our websites. Cause you know, like I said, I've told you, we're gonna, we're gonna help you. You helped us because just by bringing your wisdom and, and uh, you know, showing women that they can be, be they can be like you. Yes. It, it just takes, it takes work. It takes commitment, um, courage, and faith. All of that, it comes together. And so you are a great example to me. I tell you, I feel so inspired. I want to go out and sell some. I only like sales. <laughs> well, you can recruit for us at the beauty school. I can do that. I can That's do right. that. Now, is that, 
Is that a is that a is that a paid position? <laughs> oh, it, it can be. You you can make it a paid position. Well, look, let's do it because I need a part time. Look, me, me and you, we gonna talk offline because I'm all for it. I That's good. But this we have this a cosmetology program and the natural hair care braiders program at the school in Greensboro. So I uh, want new students. Well, I'm going to work on it. And you see, I'm a natural girl. Now I stopped doing the chemicals. I cut all my hair off to start going natural because actually I did it because my edges was falling out. But my hair has grown so crazy since then. And my hair never really did grow. You know how it grow past a, you know, a certain length and that's all it stopped. You know how our hair is, but you know, you know how to make it grow. But if you ain't really you know, doing nothing, going to a specialist, you know what I'm saying. So uh, when I went natural now, my hair is just growing like a weed, but I do like to, I like the natural. I don't do the chemicals, but that's right. I am definitely going to work on recruiting for you. I love the concept. Let's make it happen. Mrs. Dudley, you are amazing. Um, I thank God for you. I thank God that he instilled in you and Mr. Dudley to, to bring up wonderful kids. And I think I, I'll, sh I'll shout out Joe Jr. Because I told him, I said, I want your mother. <laughs> He's like, okay, is that the only reason you called me? Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, right, right. But uh, that's my buddy. We've been friends for a long time. We've actually done some events. He's been my keynote speaker at some of the events I've done in Greensboro. Um, so I thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Anything you want to share, any encouragement you want to share with our women before we close out? Well, one of the things I didn't talk about is as we had to rent all those different spaces, it gave me the opportunity to do the repairs in those places. So when it was time for us to build new buildings, I felt very comfortable working with architects and decorators and people that had to lay out the plants that we, where we did our manufacturing. It was very easy and comfortable for me to work with them and we brought on chemists and then people who had worked in compounding and making products. So it made it very easy for me to work through those building situations. And one in Kernersville, our last building we built brand new was 80,000 square feet of manufacturing and office space. I was able to hire a gentleman that uh, believed in energy efficiency. And this was back in 1993 and the construction started in 1994. I was able to get a national award in the United States, mm -hmm. number one for a manufacturing facility the size of our building for energy efficiency. And in the wow. world, I got number two for that year. And was honored by Energy News uh, Magazine. And was on that front cover, along wow. with my person that I had hired, who was the consultant on that project. So it's what you put your mind to. I believe we have to be on the cutting edge of so many things. So when people start talking now about recycling, oh, this is the newest thing. No, we've been recycling since 1969. Energy efficiency awards, 1994. It didn't just start. People are talking about light bulbs. I was listening to a big big program we had on, on uh, uh, Prolic Live, which is a program that we put on monthly. And the gentleman was talking about all of the energy we could save in our homes and in our businesses if we just follow some of the things that's out there that we could be using. Well, I've been using the energy efficient stuff for years. I didn't just start. I've been using the energy efficient things for 25 years. Wow. So the craze that people are all and up in the air and so excited over this is, it's nothing new. It's just that I was exposed to something that I believed in and I ran with it. And that's what you have to do. And you and 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 another thing, you you're a learner. That's that's major right there. You're always open to learning something new. 
And that's what I tell the young women. You can't, you can't think you, you know it all because if you know it all, you're never gonna learn anything new. Right. So you have to keep an open mind. And so you, you, you were like a sponge. You were soaking up things way back before it was popular. And, and so I think that's, that's great advice. And I, I thank you. I'm glad that it's coming from you, a woman of wisdom. And um, I thank you so much for this interview. We're going to talk uh, offline. You think I'm kidding. I'm serious about the recruiting. <laughs> All right. I'm serious uh, too. I am. So uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, you will be able to watch this on our Roku channel. You'll be able to watch this on our website, bwenetwork.com. And until our next session, thank you. God bless.